This is my new account, Kinda Slotty. I love filling in the collection log, but I want to take things one step further by limiting my access to it. In order to open up new content, I'm going to have to take advantage of the very few sections that I start with. But I have to be careful, because if I fill in a slot from a page I haven't unlocked yet, it's game over. So join me as I embark on a brand new, unique adventure. Unlocking RuneScape, one page at a time. Welcome to Log Locked. So to start this one off, I want to come over here and finish the museum mini quest, which gets me level 9 Slayer and level 9 Hunter. It might seem super, super random to come here and do this, but let me explain why it's relevant. I want to introduce you guys to a few items in the log that are freakishly difficult to grind out. Those items are the evil chicken pieces. It's really imperative that I get started on trying to grind these as early in the account as possible if I have any intention of ever getting any of them. The reason is, you have to use bird eggs to unlock these pieces. Without going super into detail, the items you need to even attempt to obtain these items are just really slow and difficult to obtain or grind for. So if I get my hunter level up a little bit, I can do something called birdhouse runs. And with birdhouses, I can obtain these items passively. Over a very, very long period of time, there's a chance I might actually be able to get some of these evil chicken outfit pieces. Plus, it gives you bird's nests and they're 6k each right now, and I'm really poor. Demon Slayer. Build of a rock. And that's Bone Voyage completed. Well, that's all done. I now have access to birdhouses, so I just put down the birdhouse, use seeds on it, come back and check on it in 40 to 50 minutes. Hey, I know you're listening. Don't tell the other people watching that the only reason I was doing this was actually for Hunter XP. I don't really care that much about the god eggs yet. Look at this dinky little thing. You call this a weapon? This is nothing compared to the stuff you can use in World of Warships, today's video sponsor. World of Warships is a free-to-play naval warfare game available on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and even mobile, which you can download via my link below. The game is absolutely overflowing with updates as new stuff comes out every single month. Whether that's collaborations with things like Transformers or Godzilla vs. Kong, or new ships or even new nations, the 12 vs. 12 arena experience will always be fresh. The graphics are pretty great as well, so each of the four unique maps and their dynamic weather are going to let you sink right into the action. From iconic battleships, destroyers, aircraft carriers, and even submarines, there is something for everyone in this game, so don't be shy about taking a look around. And if you ever want advice or people to talk to about it, the game has an insanely active community and an official Discord server, as well as tons of live streams and tournaments. So test your metal now and download the game for free via my link down below and use code Happy New Year 2024 as seen on screen here to get yourself a huge holiday starter pack. Thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. Starting this with a heroic act. I'm saving this princess from being a, a prince, from being trapped as a frog forever. And in reward, I get a very bad piece of clothing. Hey, camo bottoms, huge. Hey, got me some, oh, two pieces. Mime boots and a mime top, okay, okay. Well, that's 80 woodcutting. To anyone who's wondering why I'm getting so many random events, it's because I've been here for <clears throat> a bit of a long time. I'm actually, I'm pretty sure way longer than I expected to be, but the progress that I'm working on for a different video is taking a bit longer. So, uh, yeah, I've chopped 3,000 magic logs and 5,000 U logs so far. Well, thanks to all the birdhouse runs I've been doing while AFKing at the Woodcutting Guild, I'm now 1,000 total level already. That's gonna go up a lot by the end of this video, probably. You know, I think unlocking random events was probably the best choice that I've made on this account so far. While I've been AFKing here, I've been getting like a ton of free log slots, so hopefully we get a couple more here. Uh, unfortunate. Zombie walk emote. But still, I, I stand by my point. I think it's finally time to say tree chopping era is over. Kind of. I'll totally still be doing this in the background, but it's time for the first big goal of the video. Before I start it, I'm gonna go sell off my little collection of logs and nests. I am 84 woodcutting purely off of you and magic logs. I actually have seven, <laughs> oh my god, 7,000 magic logs. Thank you, World of Warcraft, for allowing me to AFK here. Over a mill in bird's nests. It's from freaking birdhouse runs, man. Do your birdhouse runs. Oh my lord. That's a green cash stack. Just from AFKing woodcutting. That's nuts. So if you take a look at my stats here, you can see a few of them have been just so slightly neglected. I'm going to start off by getting 70 cooking, and I'm sure you can see where this is going. Also, I'm going to start buying some oak saplings or all the, just all the little farming things that you need to get started here because, believe it or not, one, farming is important, and two, there's a collection log I can get. 
by farming. I'm pretty sure I actually got my farming XP back from getting my Hasidius favor in episode one, but technically at my level, I can't actually plant anything relevant quite yet to get good XP. Trees and fruit trees are the best way to get farming XP, but they require a bit of a higher level than I have. Thanks to a garden pie though, I can get a plus three boost and plant oak trees. So that's what I'm gonna do to start. The very first thing I need to do is actually get myself to 30 fire making for a quest. Look at all the pretty blue fires. I remember vaguely that this is supposedly faster because I don't think your character can mess up when lighting the logs or something like that, which is a bit of an inconvenience at a lower level of fire making. The difference here is I can actually mess up lighting these logs, so it might actually be faster for me to stay with the normal color logs instead of going to oak, but I don't know. And there we go, the first of many stats, 30 fire making. I bet you've never seen a man burn food at this speed before. Look how fast I can fill my inventory with burnt fish. And there's 30 cooking. Now I can go do a quest and make this even faster. A little random during the quest. A hey, little beekeeper's gloves. Now everybody knows this is the deciding factor for any account right here. If I make it across this bridge on the first try, this account is going to have amazing RNG. If I don't, it's gonna be a long series. Oh, we are blessed on this day. And now that I've done a bunch of arbitrary chores for random people on this island, I have now finished Taiwanai Trio, which means I can cook Karambwans successfully, and that's what I'm going to be doing to 70 cooking. All right, well, this is going to be my home for the next handful of hours, so I guess I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, there's level 67 cooking. I don't think I need to actually get 70. I'm pretty sure I can boost with an item, so... Cross that bridge when we get there, but this didn't actually take too long. With Crombons, it's super fast, even if you're not doing the one ticking the whole time. I have just completed the hardest quest in the entire game. That's right, Cook's Assistant. Imagine you live in your swamp, some guy just walks in your front door and demands you give him an amulet that lets you talk to ghosts. That's just a rough life. Restless Ghost completed. Another one done, Nature Spirit. And by completing Lost City, I have gained access to Xenaris and I'm very close to my first big questing goal. Up until this point, transportation on the account and just transportation around the world of RuneScape is kind of annoying. There's a lot of teleports, but there's also a lot of just really vast open areas. So one of the quest lines I wanna make sure that I'm getting done while I'm working towards Barrow's Gloves is the ability to use fairy rings via the fairy tale part two quest. Fairy rings just take you all throughout the game into a bunch of just random areas. So it's gonna be really, really nice to get that one knocked out. Another thing that'll help me get around the game faster is training my construction, but I'll do that in a little bit. I did plant all these trees earlier though, so before I start that quest line, I want to make sure that I'm doing my tree run and maybe getting the collection log that I mentioned earlier. This part of the quest is kind of the bane of most early game Iron Man accounts, but it shouldn't affect me too much. He's going to give me three random items I need to obtain in order to enchant my secutors and fight the Tanglefoot later in the quest. But I'm curious if as a main, it doesn't, yeah, let's just see if it matters. I don't know. A blue dragon scale proboscis, and jangerberries. I'm pretty sure I could just buy all that on the Grand Exchange. Let's just go do that. Oh my god, it's time for the epic fight of the century. Wow, look at this crazy boss fight. There's Fairy Tale Part 1. Now it's time to start the second one. A lot of these old Jagex quests have this, like, waiting simulator built into them. So I just have to, like, li li literally look at the left on my screen. Part of the quest is wait five minutes. What kind of game design is that? Well, I'm about halfway through the quest now, but I have now gained access to fairy rings, which let me travel all around the game to various locations, and this is just going to be insanely helpful for the Barrow's Gloves grind that I'm about to take on. There is just a couple more things that I need to knock out before I really get stuck in the quest and grind, though. The first of those things is actually in the same vein as what we're doing now, and that's going to be starting to work on construction. I'd like to get to level 50 for now to gain access to portal chambers. All this is really going to do is just consolidate all of my teleports in one location. It's mostly just a convenience thing, but it's just nice, and I have some gold right now, so I might as well be putting it to use. All right, 50 construction, very nice for now. All right, now the first thing going up is a mounted glory, very convenient. There are obviously 
higher level things that I will do in the future of this account, I want to get a max POH because it is just, it's incredibly useful, but we'll cover that in the future. For now, the glory is good because I don't have to carry one with me anymore. It's going to be helpful for a lot of quest locations, and I'm going to start figuring out what portals I want to put in these portal rooms. All right, so unlike the teleport tabs, it looks like I will have to get Arceus' favor to be able to put Arceus' teleports in, so I won't worry about those for now. All right, this is all I can do for now. I need quests and a bunch of other stuff to be able to add more portals, but we have Falador, Camelot, Artie, Lumbridge, Varrock, and then all the stuff from the glory over here. So it's mainly just going to be a massive convenience to be able to just teleport to my POH and go to all these different locations. It'll also help with clue scrolls in the future. It was just something that getting done early made the most sense to me. I actually really like the way this outfit looks with like the hairstyle and everything this character has but i just blew a lot of money on death runes and this is going to be one of my new afk grinds i need to be able to train my combat stats up passively while i'm afking or playing my other accounts so this seems like a great way to do it magic is going to be really important for the future of this account so flashing or just doing it on sand crabs so i can actually get some hp it's probably what's going to be the answer this isn't something I'm going to be doing all at once. It's going to be sprinkled intermittently between the quests. I just wanted to introduce the grind to you guys so that it wouldn't be weird if you just randomly see me getting tons of magic XP later. Yo, beekeeper's legs, let's go. Yo. Oh, it's another twofer. Dude, these random events are going to be... I'm going to be really sad when they're gone. Again, I went back to AFKing. Got myself another random, got Mime Legs and Mime Gloves. I'm only sitting at the Woodcutting Guild until I decide something new to AFK because I ran out of runes for magic. Got another piece of the Beekeeper outfit. Let's fucking go! Double! Zombie gloves and zombie trousers. Dude, random events was the best choice. Honestly, it was the best choice to unlock because I always try and AFK when I'm not actively able to play the game. And I get so many free slots from this. So it begins fishing contest now this is the part where you could put like some really sick montage music here i'll try and get a couple of parts of me actually doing some of the quests and, and now it's time to undergo the longest and most iconic quest series in the game Goblin diplomacy done. Big chompy bird hunting. Boom boom. Another one done. Okay, there you go. Jesus, that was delayed as well. Golem done. Ooh, shadow the storm. Biohazard. Time for a big one. Underground pass. I used to complain about this quest all the time, but I'm gonna be honest. It took me like, I think 25 minutes. That was pretty easy, man. Saved an ancient spirit from eternal damnation. I've come to a somewhat unfortunate realization, and that is that I'm going to have to actually complete Dragon Slayer. Then it might not seem like that big- oh my god, this came out in 2001, Jesus, I'm old. Now that might not seem like that big of a deal, but I'll explain why I was trying to avoid this as long as possible. Now I'm sure you guys remember back in episode 1, I explained the loophole with Champion Scrolls, which was if I didn't have 32 quest points, I couldn't get Champion Scroll drops, which meant I was safe to kill those NPCs without unlocking the actual section in the collection log. Well, this is a very similar situation. If you don't complete Dragon Slayer 1, you don't actually receive dragons as a slayer task like any dragons, which is really convenient because some types of dragons can actually drop the Draconic Visage, which is an item contained in, I think, like four, maybe even five different sections in the collection log. I have to be really careful when I start doing Slayer. Getting them as an assignment isn't that big of a deal if I can skip or block them, but there might come a point where I can't do that, and then I'm going to have to stock up a lot of slots in order to even be able to do something as simple as a dragon slayer task. Oh my god, my ship. Ah, dragon. Yeah. Dragon slayer 100 quest points to go. Excalibur. I have recovered the one and only Holy Grail. Again, Black Knight's Fortress. All right, it's time to do just one small favor for someone real quick. Oh, well, it wasn't so bad. It only took me a few minutes, give or take an hour. Very big quest completed. King's Ransom, I'll do the Nightwave training ground in the future, but for now, just gonna keep moving on. Ooh, Hero's Quest, buggers. All right, Family Crest. 
Bit of a detour here now, actually. I need to get a couple of Slayer levels to be able to get the Animal Magnetism quest done to get my Abba's Accumulator. Now, I don't actually have the Slayer section of the collection log unlocked yet, so Slayer is a bit of a risky one to do right now. However, I think I can get around this by simply getting a task over here at Crystillia. I don't think that any of the stuff that these guys drop are in the collection log. So 82 rogues, I'll double check, but I don't think anything they drop is in the log. Oh, hey. I'll take that. A little Laren's key while I'm out here. Luckily, it's not a log slot, and these aren't tradable now, so that's just 100k, assuming I don't get PK'd on the way out here. All right, there's 18 Slayer. Back to the questing. Ernest the chicken. Step one, undead chicken. Step two, because <laughs> I forgot to record it. Step three, profit or Seer Curse. Hello, Ice Mountain. Imp Catcher done, 100 quest points. Going on a bit of a free-to-play adventure here. Pirate's Treasure done. 700 coins for saving royalty. Hardest quest in the game, Sheep Shearer. Kill the vampire. Did this just so that Romeo would stop talking to me. Whoa, Witch's Potion. All right, that is X marks the spot completed, and that's all the free-to-play quests minus Missile and Mystery because fuck that quest doesn't count. Uh... What? I can float. I am flying. These monks are flying. And Trana is magical. What happened? Ah, the land has returned. Okay, so it's time for me to do a little bit more skilling because I want to get the Legends quest done. So I need to go get 50 smithing, 50 crafting, and 45 herb. Shouldn't take long. And there's 50 crafting. Easiest one out of the way. All right, there's 45 herb lore. And now I just have to get smithing. Luckily, I think I have access to the blast furnace, so it shouldn't be too bad. Blast Furnace is a very, very weird place. It is one of my least favorite activities in the game, but it is just unequivocally the best way to train smithing. You kind of have to do it. It's essentially just making ores faster than you would in a furnace. That's it. So that's the entire process of this. But thanks to the goldsmith gauntlets that I got from the Family Crest quest, I get a lot more XP for smithing gold here, which is exactly what I'm doing. Oh, there we go. 50 smithing. That was pretty quick. Now I can do the Legends quest. Quick little freaky forest to random, got ourselves a later hosen hat, we'll take a free log slot. Fight of a lifetime right here. Jesus, that actually took forever, dude. To be beaten by a mere mortal, I will have my revenge. Yeah, I actually agree with my character there. Yep, whatever. That admittedly took uh, quite a bit longer than I thought it would. But, Legends Quest done. I'm gonna actually use all of these on agility, because why not? It's probably my slowest skill to train, so... Pretty sure you get like four of them. Oop. Okay, I accidentally used one on attack. That's fine. Wish there was a confirmation message there. Kind of wasted 30k agility XP, but that's okay. Still got up to 72, and apparently I passed 1250 total at some point. Oh, and yeah, yeah, Legends Quest completed. Forgot about that. Yahoo, Death Plateau. Starting to work on the DT quests now. Roll Stronghold. Okay, buddy. Temple of Ikov done. A whore from the deep completed. Only 50 more quest points to go. Couple of big quests, and uh, then I guess I'll just do some miscellaneous stuff. I don't think I've ever had this problem before, but I'm actually missing a requirement for Desert Treasure, and that is 50 fire making, which is weird, because, you know, that's usually something you do pretty early on an account. So I uh, guess I'll see you guys in uh, 19 fire making levels. Oh, there's 50 fire making. I'm not hitting. I assumed this trident thing would hit. So far it is not. Does it hit at all? Turns out it sucks. Why'd I spend money on this? Oh, there's diamond one. Oh my god, finally! <laughs> Oh, that took like 160 lockpicks, bro. That was miserable. Wow, diamond number two. Look how exciting it is. Spell looks cool as fuck, though. Why am I dabbing when I cast? What is this? Look into the mystical mirror. See, I thought the spam clicking thing wasn't supposed to kick you out, but... I was spam clicking that whole time there and I got kicked out, so I don't know. See, I'm fucking spam clicking, why am I falling? You know what, I was gonna read all this dialogue and embrace the quest, but after the amount of times you made me fall in this pyramid, you can get fucked. Desert treasure done. Did I get another collection lock slot here? Yup. 
the keeper's boots. Let's go. Well, I'm AFK and crabs. I have this dragon at four HP and I'm a little scared here because there is technically a chance I get a visage. This is the first time and hopefully the only time I'll ever take a risk like this on this account. It's a one in 10,000 chance for the for once. I really want to say for once, please don't let me get lucky because I don't want to redo this entire account. I totally forgot about this step in the RFD quest. You have to kill a black dragon. Please, man. Oh my god. Oh my god, my heart just skipped a beat. Oh my god, I saw that combat task pop up. My heart skipped a beat. Oh my lord. Oh, never do that to me again, game. I, I actually just thought I got a visage there and wiped my account. Oh my god. <laughs> I love this little guy. He's like the cutest freaking model in the game. We need this as a pet. Why is this not the KBD pet? All right, it is quest turn in time. All right, woohoo. There we go. Ceramic Vars. All right, so that is all of the subquests done, but I still need, I think, 40 more quest points before I can actually go in and take on the main boss. I think I have all of the prereqs done at this point, so I'm just gonna go find some quests that I think might be useful for me. All right, that's Fermi Trials. Now let's do Isles. Huge quest completed. That is from Nick Isles. I now have access to the Neat Helm, which is super, super helpful because it gives me some strength bonus. Cannon that can fire dwarves this is actually huge 6,000 rune craft xp yahoo 10,000 farming xp there is no rhyme or reason to any of the quests i'm doing right now i'm just doing quests lost tribe completed here's gothics oh my god your family heirloom oyster pearls on the ground recruitment drive done ick florin's little helper little sheep herder action friends with the monks tale of two cats watchtower done i'm a pilot roll romance Oh, thank god that quest is done. Boom, haunted mine completed. Blind of Korend, Queen of Thieves, there's a knocker's lament. 175 quest points. Finally done. Now I have to figure out if I can even kill these. If I can even kill these RFD bosses. Cutscene that I think everyone in the RuneScape community is all too familiar with, but it is just... <sighs> it's always beautiful to be on the receiving end of that cutscene, I gotta say. It really is. Recipe for disaster completed. Now, to be frank with you guys, Barrel's Gloves are just not the caliber of item they used to be, but they are still a very, very strong item, and doing all of those quests forced me to not only train my account up a lot, we're over 1,300 total now, but it unlocked a lot of the game for me for future content. Also, I can actually bank this XP lamp, don't know why, and we can go into this chest right now and grab ourselves a nice fat pair of Barrow's Gloves. Even though they're not best in slot anymore, these are still really, really strong, tons of accuracy, tons of defense, and tons of melee strength bonus. Now it's time for the big goal of the episode. Yeah, Barrow's Gloves were actually not the end goal, in fact they were kind of one of the start ones. I want to unlock the Slayer tab and start training up that skill. Slayer is probably the most diverse skill in the entire game, as it has numerous activities, monsters, and even several bosses locked behind having a high Slayer level. Just like many other things in this series, Slayer is a road that is littered with obstacles. To be honest, this is actually one of the riskiest grinds of this account. I have to be really vigilant on checking drop tables of every single thing that I'm killing and where I'm killing them, because so many Slayer items are contained in several different pages of the log, and I really don't want to wipe my account after all that time I just spent questing. That being said, I'm going to need a small nest egg of available unlocks before I can even consider starting the skill. It's back to easy clues. Honestly, easy clues are just too good. I'm missing a ton of slots, and this would be a fantastic time to do them. Plus, I can potentially make a little bit more money since I spent the majority of my bank doing all that questing. I'm going to train my thieving level just a little bit here, though, so I don't fail as much pickpocketing the hand members. Compared to the other grinds I've already done this video, this should be easy. There we go. Level 75 Thieving. It's kind of arbitrary. There's, there's no real reason I went for specifically level 75. I feel like this will help a lot 
pickpocketing ham members. It should pretty dramatically increase my success rate, so it'll just be good for now in the future. I'm gonna have to do a lot of easy clue scrolls, so. Come to think of it, doing easy clues should actually be a lot faster now because I have access to teleports, my POH has like the glory in it. This should be pretty nice. Hey, zombie boots. Wait, zombie boots and zombie shirt. And the collection lock plugin kind of messes up until I actually click this sometimes. But, dude, nice. That was a, a double freaking uh, double log slot there. Just while I'm doing my tree run that I, I always forget to do. Dude, I'll take two free log slots. That's awesome. Yo, there it is. The spory seed. It finally happened. I've been doing a pretty okay fair few amount of tree runs here. And that is the collection lock slot that I think I alluded to very early on in this episode. I'm sure there is actually some kind of table that dictates like what the drop rate is for this. And maybe my editor will put it up on the screen if it's small enough, but I doubt that it is. However, the Hespori seed to me right now, <laughs> this is entirely useless. I cannot do anything with this until I believe level 65 farming, but I will need a lot of them to be able to unlock the Hispori boss. I'll touch more on that when we are actually going to kill it. For now, it's just a collection log slot and it is in the miscellaneous section to people wondering. I originally thought that it was in the Hispori section, but very happy that I found out I was wrong, as that actually just gave us another available unlock. All right, there we go. It took a little bit less time than the last go around, but that is 50 easy caskets. It still definitely was nowhere near as fast as, you know, like what I'm used to on my other accounts, but it was substantially faster. So I'm excited to get some collection log slots here. We are missing just in infinitely large amount of slots from all of the uh, clue scroll. I, I, my brain can't work. I can't click anything. I don't really know what I'm expecting here, but hopefully we just get some new stuff. All right, let's see some big rewards. All right, at least we're getting, uh, starting with the unique. Well, not really starting, but bronze full helm G. 70K clue, supposedly. I don't buy it for a second. I don't think that would sell. All right, there's a double there. Black plate body trimmed and bandos page H. The technically a triple, but we already have the purple sweets. And that's two steel pickaxes. Easy clues are so hit or miss. 14 Lumberyard teleports, 68k somehow. I don't know who's paying that much for teleports, but it's clearly someone's doing it. All right, Iron Plate Legs G. See, that one I would actually wear. That one looks kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. I, I like that one a little bit. I don't I don't like the rest of these, though. This has been not great so far. Never mind. Take it back. It's been more than great. It's been fantastic because that right there is, uh, is a triple. That is three new items. They're still popping up in the background. I kind of love that. All right, we're halfway done. We've gotten, what, eight slots? That's not bad. There's another double ancient robe legs and a Ceridoan page three. And we just got ourselves another unlock because of that. So that's super nice. Ooh, that's a really good one. Black wizard hat G. This one actually will totally sell for 300k. I will totally believe that because that's some fashion right there, dude. Like, look at this thing. That's some fashion right there, man. That's a new teleport, at least. That's Piscatoris. Take that. I don't even know if I'm allowed to use those yet. All right, give me, like, a couple more uniques, and I'll be happy. All right, I mean, that's just technically a couple more. Started on page one in Charge Dragonstone Jewelry Scroll. I did not even know that was a collection log slot, but uh, apparently it is. It's a new piece. War Blessing. Okay. Give me, like, one more new item. Hey, you know what? In fact, give me two more new items. Ancient page three and a blue beret this time. No way. <laughs> this is exactly what I was asking for. That is so rare. Oh, and that is worth so much money. It's worth a lot less than I thought, but I need this like really badly on my, my completionist series, man. Oh, I just used all my RNG on this account, but that's fine. 5.7 million gold. Look at this thing, man. First of all, it, it will skull you. That's what it does. It looks sick. Dude, that looks so cool. It gives you a skull. It looks awesome. Look at that, just like the outline too around the bottom of my character. No way. That is incredible. No way we get anything else, right? And that's fine. All right, we did actually get one more reward too. But dude, Cape of Skulls, that's crazy. Oh yeah, with that clue opening, we have also passed over 100 collections logged now, which is pretty cool. It's obviously really early milestone in the account, but that's nice. Well, bright side is since we got that, uh, Cape of Skulls, I'm actually, okay, well, I'll put in a higher offer. I'm actually able to buy myself a Fury and a Whip, so that's going to be pretty nice for going through this grind and just for Slayer in general. Now, I promise I'm not trying to mislead any of you guys. There's like a, a handful more things I need to do before we actually start Slayer, and one of them is a grind that is all too familiar to every RuneScape player ever. The Warrior's Guild 
and the defender grind. So obviously before we get started, I am going to go to the other section, go to Cyclops, and I'm going to unlock this. And now we have access to getting ourselves all of the defenders. They're just too strong to ignore getting. To people who might not be aware, the defender grind is pretty much essential because they just give you really powerful offhand items that really enhance your ability to do damage with melee. They're really simple to obtain, you just have to get these tokens, you go in, fight Cyclops, and then just climb the different tiers of them at a 1 in 50 rate per tier, until you get to the final one, which is 1 in 100. With only 8 slots here, it is again one of those sections that is technically a net negative, but at least all 8 slots are really really easy to get, and they would have been something I needed eventually for the account anyway. There's the first one, Bronze Defender. Hey, there's the Iron Defender. Hey, there is Steel Defender. Hey, Black Defender. There we go, Mithril Defender. That one took, that one took a while. Oh, long bone. Too bad I already have one. That would have been a nice free log slot. There we go. Ten left. And I've just got my Adamant Defender. Hey. Right after I stopped the B-roll. There we go. That is the Dragon Defender, and that is Cyclops Green Logged. Very, very nice. That is beautiful. That is very beautiful. In fact, the Dragon Defender is actually like a huge, huge part of melee training. The strength bonus alone is basically like one and a half max hits, and the accuracy is just crazy. It might not sound like that big of a difference, but to those of you who play the game a lot, you understand just how big of a difference one max hit can really make. Now, if you look down here, you can see I have four available unlocks right now. The thing about Slayer is, there is a lot of side things that I will have to unlock before I can really start doing it, and also having more gear and more GP will allow me to train faster with things like cannoning, barraging Slayer, and all that. I want to open up a section of the log where I can make a little bit of profit right now, both in terms of slots and in terms of GP. And based on where I'm standing, I'm sure a lot of you guys can guess that section is going to be LMS. This is actually the first minigame we have unlocked on the series, and as you can see, there are 32 slots here. Now, first of all, some of these slots are more or less unattainable, like winning the minigame 1,000 times, but we'll get into that later. Last Man Standing, aka LMS, is basically just Battle Royale, but in RuneScape. You all start with the same stats, upgrade your loadout, and try to beat everyone else. The better you do, the more points you get. I want to open this page up though, because it has a lot of slots in it, and even though some, like the 1000 win cape, for example, are extremely unrealistic unless you cheat or buy wins from cheaters, or wanted to wait a year for this video, there are tons of tradable uniques in here that all have a pretty decent value associated with them. And that's what we're going to be chasing right now. So let's see if I can still PvP at all. Forgotten the number one rule of LMS. Public chat? Definitely want that off. I honestly feel like I, I should have won that, to be honest with you. Hey. Dub's a dub, baby. He's probably mad, but yeah. Shit, RNG. Dub's a dub still, I'll take it. So because I got that first win, I actually already have 12 points after playing two games, which is <laughs> really good. Apparently I'm not as bad at this as I remember being. I can actually go down here and claim myself the Tier 1 Win Cape, which is a collection log slot. So that one's, you know, pretty free. This one just uh, gets upgraded the more you do. Everything else actually costs points that you get in the minigame, but the capes are just based on the amount of wins. So, obviously, I'm going to be trying to win. Are you just a bot? The thing about LMS is if you find the right time to play, and I'm not saying that I encourage botting, sometimes you find these games that are just full of bots, and if you find a game full of bots, you get free wins and free points. So, not going to complain about a free 7-point game that's also a win. Also, don't know why I put my glory on at the end there. But GF, take another dub, take another dub. Bonk. Oh, that was just funny. I like the bonk. Bonk. Not the time for a max claw spec, but it was funny. Oh, that was the last guy. Oh, okay, sweet. Okay, well. So the fuck RNG? What do you mean RNG, bro? You were just praying the wrong thing. Not RNG, you just didn't pray right. I'm guessing this last guy is just a bot in the fog somewhere. Let me tell you guys, I don't know if this is necessarily always true, but from my experience, if you are trying to get these collection log slots, or you just want to make some money, the best time to play LMS is always like 8 to 11 a.m. Eastern. I don't know why, it just has consistently been the best time for me to do this. It was the best when I was on my Iron Man, so 
Let's see if that holds true here as well. Bro, the bot doesn't even have the armor on. It's just stand. It's standing here with no armor and it got the second place. Imagine. Somehow the last two players in here were both bots. So uh, take my free win, I guess. Almost had a free win there. Oh, never mind. I did get a free win there. <laughs> I'll take it. Good fight, brother. Oh, that guy was playing so filthy, but I beat him. Thank God. All right. Very nice dub. Very nice dub. But I've actually apparently been uh, doing pretty okay here. 25 games played and 10 wins already, which means I can go over to Justine over here and grab myself the tier 2 win cape. I do have 114 points, so I'm going to buy a couple of things here as well. All right, so first things first is the Ornate Mall Handle. That's one slot down. Let me take a look what else here. I want to get the cheaper ones first because I'm a little bitch. Lava Staff Upgrade Kit. I'm assuming that we also have the Steam Staff Upgrade Kit. Let's grab that. Uh, I should have enough for maybe three more things here. Okay, so we can go ahead and buy that. All right, so we have 59 points left. I guess I probably buy 25 point things, like the granite clamp. Again, double checking. All right, only from here. Bam, granite clamp. I guess we'll just buy the ward upgrade kit too, because why not? One of one match. Okay, bam, ward upgrade kit. All right, so that gives me back up to four available unlocks already. We already basically paid for ourselves with LMS here. Still plenty of things to unlock, but I think I'll kind of, just like most things, come back to it every now and then. I don't want to bore you guys too much by just staying at the same place for like weeks or months at a time, but that few hours here, okay, it's more than a few hours, but that good handful of hours here actually ended up netting me a juicy little three million gold, so that's pretty good. Now it's finally time to begin what will likely be the longest overall grind on this series, Slayer.